Welcome back to Wildcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the first successful step towards disbarring or suspending Carrie Lake's lawyers, some of her worst lawyers who've been pushing the election lies along with her in court. And that is because the Supreme Court's Attorney Discipline Probable Cause Committee, which is a part of the Arizona Supreme Court, has approved the motion by the uh, State Bar Association in Arizona to disbar two of its lawyers. So when you're a lawyer in a state, the state you basically have a card with the state bar allowing you to practice law in that state. And if you commit egregious violations of ethics, like these people did by lying in court about how there's massive fraud against uh, Carrie Lake, that's a lie. And you can be disbarred for moral turpitude, which is what's happening to what's already happened to Rudy Giuliani. His license to practice law has been suspended and he will be disbarred in D.C., which means he will no longer be able to practice uh, law in any of the states. After you're disbarred in one state, the other states are not going to allow you to practice law pro hoc vice, which is the only way that you can practice law when you don't have a law license and the judges are not going to allow you to do that after you've been disbarred, after you have been accused and basically convicted in a civil sense of moral turpitude, you're not going to be able to practice law. So Rudy Giuliani's career is over. He's only been suspended by the New York courts, but he's it's over. Okay, He's never practicing law again. Same thing is going to happen to um, John Eastman, who has already basically been disbarred because the judge had fa- sided with the state bar in California, saying that he committed uh, uh, significant ethical violations. Uh, uh, John Eastman did. And he will most likely be disbarred by the end of, by the end of next year or the middle of next year. These things take a long time to gather the evidence and consider things. And I think that's the way it should be because you're taking somebody's livelihood away. Even even though we hate these people, the legal system has to consider all of the um, all of the potential outcomes and the seriousness of what you're doing. Because when you take somebody's bar license away, you're taking their livelihood away as a lawyer. Okay, Now, they can find other work, obviously, and I'm not saying feel sorry for these people, but there's a reason why these things are very considered. Okay, They're considered. They're not done willy-nilly. Okay, for anybody who's complaining about how the process is unfair, they're done very, with a lot of thought. The the bar associations consider these motions very carefully before they file to take somebody's bar license away. Now, with all that being said, let's jump to what's happening now. So uh, we got reporting from multiple sources. Uh, There's a local news source from Arizona um, explaining what's happened here. Bar complaints against Carrie Lake's attorneys move forward. So this is a first necessary step to get them either disbarred or suspended. Now, when the actual complaints come forward, I will read them to you guys, like what they're asking for. They're either going to ask to suspend their licenses, like happened to Giuliani, or disbar them. Okay. Given the egregious conduct of people like Brian Blem and Kurt Olson, I would suspect that the uh, Arizona bar is going to ask the bar, uh, the state bar is going to ask for their bar license to be uh, suspended indefinitely or they're going to be disbarred. That's a, that's essentially like being disbarred because you're never going to practice law again. Okay, But we don't know exactly what they're going to ask for. They can ask for a six-month suspension, three-month suspension, a month suspension, or disbarment. There are many things that the California bar can ask for. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the Arizona bar. The California bar is asking for John Eastman to be disbarred, for example. I still have California bar in my head because that's the state that I live in. But anyways. Court's Attorney Discipline Probable Cause Committee signed orders authorizing the bar to prepare official complaints against Brian Blem and Kurt Olson. When the official complaints are filed, then we'll know exactly what the uh, bar is bar wants to do to these three jackasses. Okay, so it's Brian Blem, Kurt Olson, and Andrew Parker who both represent Carrie Lake in her challenge to the 2022 gubernatorial election. She lost to Katie Hobbs. So they've participated in many federal and civil cases that she has filed, and they've lost every single one in federal court and in uh, local Arizona courts, okay? Uh, So here is a picture of Kurt Olson, just to put a picture to the face, I mean a face to the name, excuse me, and here is the much more crazier Brian Blem, okay? That's that's him in court with Mrs. Trader, treason herself, uh, Carrie Lake, and here is a story from before about how um, his, her lawyers have gotten sanctioned before. I've covered these all these sanctions in my on my channel, but I want to show you guys some examples of this. The Arizona Supreme Court on Thursday sanctioned attorneys for Carrie Lake, um, the 2020 Republican candidate, blah, blah blah, ordering them to pay thousands of dollars for repeating unequiv- unequivocally false election claims. So that's one example. Uh, another one, Carrie uh, Carrie Lake's team ordered to pay more than $122,000 in sanctions over uh, Maricopa lawsuit. That was another sanction that was put on uh, her lawyers, including Kurt Olson, who was part of that. And another one, 
Supreme Court sanctions Lake in election lawsuit. The Supreme Court sanctioned the lawyers representing failed Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake for their false uh, assertions in court, uh, including divorce lawyer Brian Blem. That's this loser over here who's not even an election lawyer. That's why he doesn't know anything about election law and he failed miserably to represent Carrie Lake. She doesn't know the law, illegal content of what he's talking about. Uh, and the other guy over here, Olson, is a uh, D.C. employment attorney. He's, none of these people are election lawyers. That's why they don't know shit about what they're talking about and why they – why they. Uh, well, part of the reason they filed these. I think this guy here – I don't know about Olson, but Blem here, if you look at his social media, which I unfortunately uh, did in my research, he actually believes the lies that Kerry Lakes tells. So it's not just to make money, which is what I thought was part of it. He actually believes that the election was stolen. This guy's a nut. OK, and he's not qualified to be a lawyer, in my opinion, but that's that's only my opinion. The uh, the bar is going to have to prove that in court and then get these people dis, uh, disbarred or suspended, depending on what they ask for. <clears throat> Both Blem and Olsen face one complaint over a claim they made during uh, Lake's election challenge over the 35,000 ballots uh, that over 35,000 ballots were fraudulently injected into the election. This is the uh, ballot injection claim. Famous lie that uh, um, Carrie Lake told, and it's been proven to be a lie because she's lost two trials based on it. The Arizona Supreme Court previously granted sanctions against Lake's team for repeating that claim, and that's what this is. This, this. All these have been approved by the Supreme Court and also by the federal court. I didn't even go over the federal claims, which you got. You guys can look at those um, stories if you like. But the Supreme Court has, on multiple occasions, have sanctioned them, and the federal court has also sanctioned them as well. I covered in my videos. I covered them when that when it happened. Longtime viewers of the channel will know what I'm talking about. Although Lake may have permissibly argued that an interference could be made that some ballots were added. There is no evidence that 35,563 ballots were, uh, were. And more to the point here, this was certainly disputed. Chief Judge Robert uh, Brutonell wrote in the sanctions order. So they claimed that this many ballots had been injected somehow, but they couldn't prove it because they weren't injected. It's a lie, a conspiracy most likely picked out of the many conspiracies in Twitter and filed in law in actual legal papers by these two losers over here okay who had no evidence to prove their claims and now they're getting sanctioned for it and their bar license is at stake it's never a good look even to have even to be investigated by the bar is not a good look for a lawyer okay because that's going to be on your record and if people hear about it if if it's a big news story then your reputation is going to be damaged that means you're going to lose business okay even being suspended is a death na death nail for your uh legal career so they're screwed, and this is the price they have to pay for pushing conspiracy, and I love it. You can take it and inject it right into my veins. Blem faced an additional complaint over a post he made on X, formerly known as Twitter, a post alleging a Supreme Court task force was part of a CIA-induced effort to stifle cases exposing election fraud. Of course, they have to bring the CIA into it. They have to demonize the federal government somehow. The post referred to a decision by Arizona Supreme Court Justice Robert Burnell to form a task force on countering disinformation. The idea was to provide responses to false claims that otherwise would go unanswered, undetermining public confidence, undermining, excuse me, undetermining, hilarious, undermining public confidence in the courts. In his response to the bar, Blem denied the bar allegation that he accused the court of engaging in a conspiracy. He certainly accused the court of being in a conspiracy with the CIA. That's literally what he did. Okay, now he's now that he's about to get punished, he doesn't. He's like, oh no 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 no, that's not what I meant. Quote, my tweet was intended to say that the Arizona judiciary was hoodwinked. Oh, they were fools, huh? Not actively participating in a CIA conspiracy against you, huh? So it was only th that the that the court was too stupid and they were hoodwinked by the national security apparatus specifically to limit attorney speech and willingness to bring valid claims on behalf of their clients. That's not what you said, bro. So on on X, they, their conspiracies sound much scarier than when they get in trouble. Oh, no, 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 bro. I didn't say that. I was just saying that they were hoodwinked. Interesting, right? So it shows what kind of pussies they are. They can't stand by their uh, convictions, their lunatic conspiracies. They don't want to lose their jobs. And that's exactly what should happen to them. The separate complaint against Olsen and Parker, who's the uh, the next guy over here, Andrew Parker, uh, centered around several unsubstantiated claims the attorneys made in court, including that Arizona does not use paper ballots and that voting systems in Maricopa County are connected to the Internet, even though an investigation commissioned by the Arizona state uh, concluded otherwise. Of course, they're not connected to the Internet. There are state laws uh, that prevent that from happening, from election systems from being connected 
mm, excuse me, to the internet. Specifically, uh, there are local laws that prevent that in every state, every 50 state, because the elections are run by the state. So there are some federal laws governing these things, but the local election law most readily applies to every single election that happens. And election officials have to abide by their state laws, and the federal laws comply with the state laws. They enforce the state laws even more if there are problems, for example. U.S. District Judge John Tucci dismissed that case and awarded sanctions against Lake's legal team, the case where they claimed that there was some kind of conspiracy here um, with the uh, election machines. In response to the bar complaint, an attorney representing Parker argued the judge erred in awarding those sanctions. Yeah, good luck telling that to the appeals courts, which they lost in appeals courts before on these claims, claiming the case was on good faith effort to protect the integrity of the election. The, you're all trying to destroy the integrity of our elections. That's what Kerry Lake is all about, who has threatened a judge the Justice Department and the FBI directly and with gun violence in a sense. So I consider her to be uh, a threat to the uh, peace of society. The complaint could now enter formal hearings overseen by a disciplinary judge or to be settled through a disciplinary agreement. If there is an agreement, they will ask for some kind of some kind of sacrifice from these lawyers. They're not just going to give them give them an agreement and let them go on their way. There's going to be severe punishment either way, whether it proceeds to a full like trial situation where that's what ultimately has to happen. Arizona court, most likely Arizona Supreme Court, has to suspend their license or disbar them. That's the final step. Okay, but it has to go through many other steps before then. So we'll see what they decide to do. My guess is that if they realize what kind of shit they're in, they will take some kind of, you know, equivalent of a plea here. This is like a, you know, a civil case, but nevertheless, they will try to come up with some agreement to give up something and not get the full punishment. That's what that, I'm sure the Arizona bar, Arizona bar is willing to talk to them, but there has to be some kind of skin in the game where they sacrifice something for these lies. They're not going to just let them walk scot-free. I at least I hope they don't, okay? But I don't know the people in the uh, Arizona state bar. I don't know how serious they are, but it seems like they're pretty serious if they're if they're going to this committee and asking to take action against them. So when the official complaints come forward, we'll see what they're asking for. Like I said, they can ask for uh, a long-term or short-term suspension or disbarment and uh, the, basically the re revocation of their bar licenses, which means they can no longer be lawyers. So that's an extreme thing to ask for. But I think in this case, especially Brian Ble uh, Blem's case, he is not fit to be a lawyer, in my opinion. OK, uh, Andrew Parker and Kurt Olson, they're not as insane as Brian Blem, in my opinion. But uh, but that's up to the courts to decide. OK, so. That's all I got to say for this video. I'll be doing more updates as these happen. It's important to cover these cases because these people, these election liars who are trying to destroy the American people's trust in our government and in the election process have to be held accountable. That's why I cover these videos. That's why I take up time out of my schedule to do them. I have very little free time given how much I work. Um, so that's why it's important to cover these and that's why I do cover them. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you support my work, you can do so on Patreon over here. If you want to watch my last video, you can do so over here. That's all I got to see for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys in my next one.